Now that South Africa is a rainbow nation, it may be hard for many to remember the brutality of the apartheid regime, much of it unfolding on the streets while Mandela was behind bars. After his release, he said that in prison, as we already mentioned, his hatred for whites decreased, but his hatred for the system grew. Black anti-apartheid protest, protesters had their whole community behind them. Whites, who joined the anti-apartheid movement, were all too often shunned by their communities. Max Dupriez, a journalist, was one of the first to bring the stark realities of apartheid's cruelty to the insulated white population. In 1988, he started the first Afrikaans newspaper to write about the government's official policy of violence and humiliation. More than 20 years later, he says his country's psyche is still deeply scarred by apartheid, and he joins me now from Cape Town. Welcome to the program, Mr. Dupriez. Let me ask you first, how did you come to decide to, to, to establish this paper and to take on your system? I was convinced if uh, Afrikaans-speaking South Africans heard the full story of apartheid and heard the voices of the authentic voices of the leaders of South Africa, the ANC and the UDF, that they would think again about the viability and the morality of apartheid. I, I thought they, they were sold the story that apartheid was separate development of, of races, of, of ethnic groups, and not that it was a violent uh, ideology. And if we showed them the townships and we showed them the people and we showed them the violence with which apartheid had to be applied, that, that would start making a difference and, and, and prepare their minds for a kind of a negotiated solution. And, and do you feel it did? Do you feel you were successful in that regard? It's hard to say. Um, what we ended up doing was exposing a lot of death squads in the police and disappearances and murders and assassinations. Um, which I think drove the point home that this is not a, a, a peaceful way, this is a highly immoral way to live. And I think we appeal to, uh, to a moral, we, we started a moral debate also. I mean, one of the main reasons why the uh, Afrikaners in power changed their minds and started negotiating was the economic situation, which was dire. Um, the sport boycotts, the, the international boycotts, but there was also a beginning to be a moral debate, especially in the churches and academic circles. And we fed very strongly into that and put pressure on the government. Uh, they couldn't uh, any longer sell the story that uh, we're fighting against the communists and we're fighting for Christian civilization because we had shown in Afrikaans uh, what apartheid's face really was. Now, how... How difficult was it to actually tell the story? Because obviously for a long time the ANC was banned, any mention of them was banned, the name Nelson Mandela was banned. I mean, I've heard stories of, of, of white South Africans who didn't really hear about what was going on or hear the name Mandela until they'd left the country. How difficult was just getting that, those names and that news across? Yes, I think there was a remarkable uh, absence of, of understanding of what was really going on. Um, the ANC was a banned organization, so we could not quote them, could not publish pictures of them. They couldn't uh, address meetings, and they were in exile in, in, in neighboring states. So white South Africans happily lived in a bubble, um, and, and we wanted to pierce that bubble and say, you need to know. You can't just, when you go overseas, look back and see, oh my goodness, this is the real face of South Africa. We wanted to say to people, this is the real face of South Africa. And it is in your interest uh, to embrace change and to embrace a, a, a new move towards democracy. You've said that Nelson Mandela wasn't just a gift from heaven, that it was a much bigger situation than that. What did you mean by that? Well, I think there are too many South Africans, especially white South Africans, but especially people from overseas, who have this view that Africa is the dark continent of famine and AIDS and, and civil war and Idi Amin and Mabuta Sesoseko. And suddenly, after 1990, there was this man 
who was loved more than anybody else in the world, revered more, more than anybody else. He was the biggest icon, and he was a black man from Africa. And so the tendency was to treat him as an exception. He was an aberration. It's not really, they're not really like that. He's a special guy. He's some kind of angel, some kind of saint. And I've always made the point, and he has made the point, Mr. Mandela, that he is a product of Africa, of Africa, of South African society, of South African culture, and he is not a fluke. There are Mandela, there have been Mandelas before him, Mandela figures before him. Hopefully, there will be Mandela figures again. They are among us. We have a little bit of Mandela in us. He was just the right guy at the right time, um, but with a very special gift um, to build bridges, to reassure people, to take his own people with him, um, and put all those things together, and you have the magic that happened in 1994. And very briefly and finally, Mr. Dupreeze, do you fear for post-Mandela South Africa? Do the whites fear, or do you think South Africa is well on its way to just continuing along its path? Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of talk here of an African spring uh, or becoming a failed state, and I think that's our own paranoia. So the, the systems are strong in South Africa, the institutions are strong. The judiciary is strong. Our constitution is untouchable. Democracy and freedom are written into the hearts of the people. And we are struggling with a lot of things, especially with, with uh, political leadership at the moment. So may, we may have not such a good government, but as a people, we are doing fine. And there is no way uh, that in my lifetime we're going to see a banana republic, a failed state, a Zimbabwe-type situation. Um, and this, the, the end of, of the Mandela era is a reminder to all of us what we are capable of as a people. And, and that's what we're talking about in the last few days and will for the next few days is, is carry that in our hearts. He gave us uh, confidence that we're not some little forgotten nation somewhere in dark Africa. We're kind of special. We, we can do uh, what other nations can do. We can be a successful nation. Max Dupreeze, thank you very much for joining me from Cape Town.